Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming to East Brunswick for our annual Memorial Day program. Uh, I don't know who I should thank for the wonderful weather we have today, but if any of you had a part to do with that, you're hired for the Township of East Brunswick. Before I get started, I do want to um, acknowledge that uh, the program today is being brought to you, as always, from our wonderful Parks and Recreation Department, and I wanted to make sure everybody gives them a round of applause before we do that at the end, and I think that's unfair. Before we begin with the, uh, the opening ceremony, I want to introduce those that are up here uh, and, and uh, honoring uh, those who have fallen uh, in our armed services. First uh, and foremost, we have to my left, Council President Kevin McAvoy. <laughs> Councilman Dinesh Bahal. <laughs> Councilwoman Dana uh, Winston. Uh, Assemblyman Sterling Stanley. I believe we have Senator Patrick Dignan. Our County Commissioner, Charlie Kenny. We have the County Clerk from East Brunswick, Nancy Pinkin. Our Business Administrator, Joseph Crisculo. And our Economic Development Officer, Robert Zuckerman. And with us from the clergy, Rabbi Eric Eisenkramer from Temple B'nai Shalom. And you will get to hear from him in a little bit, our guest speaker, Michael Bull. We'll now commence with the opening ceremony. The first group today is our 2023 host post VFW Post 133. The goals of the VFW and its auxiliary are to promote patriotism and volunteerism. They support veterans' hospitals and aid veterans and their families. They lend support to East Brunswick's youth organizations, our schools, our community organizations, and our township families in need.
The Jewish War Veterans Post 311. Members of the Jewish War Veterans Post 311 are active all year long providing various services to our veterans, especially in regards to veterans in the VA hospital, Lions Campus, and the Veterans Memorial Home in Menlo Park. Their activity, activities include hosting bingo, refreshment parties. They take patients to football, basketball, and baseball games. I don't know why they missed hockey. Uh, in addition, the Post donates clothing at holiday times to the Veterans Memorial Home in Menlo Park. The Jewish War Veterans is the nation's oldest active veterans organization. <laughs> Represented today and next is the Vietnam Veterans of America. Over 9 million military personnel served on active duty during the Vietnam era from August 5th of 1964 to May 7th of 1975. This figure includes servicemen who were stationed in the U.S. 2.6 million personnel served within the borders of South Vietnam. The war resulted in 58,000 casualties and over 303,000 that were injured. Since the Vietnam War ended, hundreds of chapters have been chartered. Local chapters are very active in community events and at our veterans' hospitals. You may be seated. I had the opportunity a couple of days ago of getting to speak at a unity rally in township celebrating one of our town's, I think, greatest attributes, which is our diversity and our unity as a community. And it was uh, uncanny and kind of a little bit uh, difficult to, to do that at a time when we all know as an individual, our nation suffers from a, uh, a lack of or actually lack of unity or a bit of disunity where we seem to always be arguing with one another and at each other's throats over issues that really shouldn't be things that uh, t tear us apart. And we often at that time tend to blame those that represent us and if we just had better leaders it would be the end of the problem we could we could heal. But the reality is that as I get third graders coming up to the township, as I talk to youth groups, as I talk to council, uh, uh, youth council members, the reality is the United States is a representative government. The government that we have are the people that we elect. So if we believe that our government is fractured, if we believe that it's dysfunctional, if we believe that there's an illness, then it's a mirror. And it's, a, it, it's not the mirror that you need to fix, it's the reflection of what's in the mirror. We need to fix ourselves. And I think that there's ways that we could do that and it's demonstrated by those of us here today and, and, and should be mentioned at a time today when those who saw the world differently were willing to put their lives on the line and pay the ultimate sacrifice to preserve equality, to preserve a unity, to preserve a country that deserves no less. That sacrifice cannot be overlooked. There are ways that we can heal ourselves. And I spoke about that at the Unity Walk. First and foremost, we need to turn off the 24-hour news cycle. It is killing us with information that is not always so necessarily correct. And in an age of AI, you have to be really careful about what you're being fed because we're learning how easy it is to change the truth. And The other thing that we can do is we should learn to detach from all of our, our, our social media Order. and, Order. and Order. instruments Order. that are... Order. Order. And I think that what we need to consider is an increase in volunteerism to this country, one Order. that provides us with Order. benefits that we often Order. forget about. Order. I think that there is an opportunity for our youth, as we see today, to participate in scout scouting. I think there's an opportunity for youth groups. We look at organizations such as the Elks and, and Knights of Columbus, which over decades have seen a tremendous decrease in volunteerism. And I think the thing that we often forget about is that we have people who are willing and every day putting their lives on the line here and overseas 
to protect the, the, the country and our unity and our independence that we're so easy to poke fun at. So I think that there's a lesson in what we see here today. I'm extraordinarily proud and actually uh, supportive of the things that I see happening around me. I'm tired of listening about the ills of this country because I think there's so many more things that we get right. What we get right is the fact that for decades, for two and a half centuries, people have put their lives on the line for an ideal and we're celebrating those people today. You're going to be seeing somebody and listening to somebody today who represents that military service and the commitment to not only the service that he provided during the years that he was in active military, but continues to do that today. And we're also going to do something for the first time that we've rarely done, haven't really done here at Memorial Day service, and that's recognizing that we have three students that will be graduating this year and volunteering to the armed services. One is going to be in the uh, academies and two are enlisting. So that if there's anything that should make us proud to be Americans, it's the fact that no matter what happens, what party you belong to, what God you, you pray to, that the ideal of America still stands strong with our youth. And that's the surest sign that the country should expect to be around for another two and a half centuries. And they will be recognized today. So let's not look at this as a sad day, but as an opportunity to recognize everything that we do right and to promote that and to try to continue to do that so that our youth has a United States, just like you and I have, that we can be extraordinarily proud of. I'm gonna ask Rabbi Eric Eisenkramer to come up and conduct the invocation. Thank you, Mayor Cohen. Our God, God of our ancestors, we thank you for the numerous blessings you have bestowed upon our nation. Out of the many nations of the world, our country has been blessed with a singular opportunity to demonstrate how peoples of many faiths and heritage is can live side by side and enrich one another's lives through friendship and the sharing of our unique traditions. We are, not, we are united this day in a solemn act of gratitude to those who have served in our nation's defense, to those who have risked their personal safety to save the lives of others, and above all, to those who have given their lives in serving this country. Their sacrifices are forever remembered by us and by our children for generations to come. Our hearts go out to those serving today in our armed forces and to their families. In all of our many faiths, we are united in this. Our prayers are with those who serve our country today. We ask God that they may return speedily and in good health and in safety to their loved ones. And may God grant each of us the wisdom to uphold this nation's virtues, and may it continue to serve as a beacon of liberty and harmony between peoples for all the world to see. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. I'm now going to ask Erwin Steinle and Paul Deutsch of the Vietnam Vets of America to take their place at the flagpole, while Mr. Ira Roth of the Jewish War Veterans leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. And please recognize the flags that are being raised by both Paul and Erwin. Montana, Jen, Gary, Collins. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll now have the Star Spangled Banner performed by the East Brunswick Senior Center Chorus and the East Brunswick Brass Choir.
Stop. Right. Stop. 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 We will now begin the wreath ceremony. The first wreath will be the wreath for the Vietnam Veterans of America, and we'll call upon Erwin Steinlein and Paul Deutsch. Now we'll begin with the veterans. Vietnam Veterans of America, again, Erwin Steinlight and Paul Deutsch. I'd like to now call upon Commander Ira Roth from the Jewish War Veterans Post 311. Can we please have, com have Commander Tommy Cohill from VFW Post 133.
I'd now like to call upon the Women's Auxiliary, President Elizabeth Toff from the VFW Post Laying a wreath for the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary is Chief Petty Officer Juliana Schiano. And now laying a wreath for East Brunswick Township, our, our, our council members, Council President Kevin McAvoy, Councilman Dinesh Bahal, and Councilwoman Dana Winston. Playing the Freedom Wreath is William Koch Jr. in honor of his son, Corporal Stephen Koch, 82nd Airborne Division, killed in action in Afghanistan in 2008, and all service members who have sacrificed their lives. We will now ask East Brunswick High School student Adrian Cerise to perform TAPS, and that will then be followed by Amazing Grace by John O'Keefe, uh, and uh, I ask that you still remain standing.
I would like to point out as you come down the walkway here that we have pavers that are in recognition of those who served our country. Uh, each year we announce the new ones at Memorial uh, Day service. We do have a new uh, paver that was placed in honor of Emery Ronald Toth, a proud Marine and Vietnam veteran. veteran. So I ask that uh, before you leave today that you uh, look at all the, the pavers um, pay respects to those that serve this country and and obviously if anybody has any interest in contributing in the future to those that they know live in the community or have served this country please feel free to reach out to the parks and rec department and we'll make sure that they get that recognition at this point uh, everybody can be seated thank you As I mentioned earlier, we do want to recognize students who will be going into the armed services this coming year and are graduating East Brunswick High School. So I'm gonna ask for the three uh, who are being recognized to come forward if they are here. Colin Grangeen of, will be joining the Air Force. Sergio Valora will be joining the Navy. and Isabella Vasquez, who was accepted into the Air F uh, Naval Academy. I'm going to ask uh, Assemblyman Sterling Stanley to come up because we have a presentation for you from both the Township and from the New Jersey State Assembly and Senate. Thank you, everyone. Just want to say one thing real quick. Uh, the greatness of our nation and the freedom that we enjoy today is based on one common factor, is that it is defended and guarded by the armed forces of our country. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. As we give homage to all those that came, generations that came before us and defended our country and gave their lives for our country, you know, we pay homage to them. But we also want to do something new this year. We want to pay tribute and homage to this new generation of young gentlemen and women who are going to step forward and serve our country and defend those same rights that we all enjoy. And as parents, we all are proud and we all know what a feeling that is. I see in our crowd, the Konas right now, their son is right now in the, Marine, in the Navy defending our country from our township. So like, likewise, we want to celebrate each and every one of these kids going forward as they go into the military, sacrificing their lives. So I just wanted to take a moment to say that. And Senator, if you want to just say a few words before uh, the councilwoman reads out the proclamation for Isabella. What can I say but thank you. Uh, this is the greatest country on earth, period. We are the land of the free because we are the home of the brave. And you are carrying on that tradition. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Isabella, I'm proud to read this for you. This is a joint legislative resolution by Senator Dinan and Assemblyman Karabinchak and Stanley. Whereas the Senate and General Assembly of the State of New Jersey are pleased to acknowledge Isabella Vasquez, an admired resi resident of the Garden State, who has earned distinction for her acceptance into the United States Naval Academy. And whereas, a senior of exceptional promise at East Brunswick High School with a 4.096 GPA, <laughs> Isabella Vasquez has secured a sterling reputation as a member of the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, as captain of the dance team, and a Girl Scout who earned the prestigious Gold Award. And whereas a competitive dancer who has taught the craft at Dance Stop Dance Education Center, Isabella Vasquez is further lauded for her uncommon measure of public spiritedness as made evident by her contributions to the East Brunswick Youth Council, her volunteer efforts during food collection drives and other community events, and through deciding to follow in the footsteps of her father and serve her country in the United States Navy. And whereas Isabella Vasquez, a faithful congregant of Lighthouse Christian Fellowship, has established a model to emulate and set a standard of excellence 
toward which all others might strive. And whereas New Jersey's young people who set their goals high, who preserve in the pursuit of these goals, and who reach their desired milestones and meet their objectives, stand as an example and an inspiration to their fellow citizens of all ages. Whereas it is altogether fitting and right for the members of this legislature to pause in their deliberations to recognize Isabella Vasquez as a young woman of remarkable character and boundless determination. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and General Assembly of the State of New Jersey that this legislature hereby salutes Isabella Vasquez, pays tribute to her personal accomplishments and academic achievements, and extends sincere best wishes for continued success in all the days to come. And be it further resolved that a duly authenticated copy of this resolution signed by the Senate President and the Assembly Speaker and attested by the Senate Secretary and the Assembly Clerk be transmitted to Isabella Vasquez. Congratulations. We too have a proclamation from the township for you. So I'd like to ask the councilmen and women to stand up with me as we read that for you. So whereas less than 1% of Americans currently wear the uniforms stepping up to defend the other 99% of our nation with honor and with courage, the brave members of our Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard represent the best of our nation. And whereas there are 1.4 million active duty personnel in the Department of Defense, making it the largest employer in the United States, military members are more highly educated than the general population as 99% possess at least a high school education. And clearly there are academic scholars among them. You are looking at one right now. Whereas United States voters have always recognized leadership qualities earned through military service, 31 of 45 U.S. presidents have served in some branch of the military. And whereas we show our utmost respect and gratitude to the proud individuals who answer the call to service, taking the sacred oath to defend our Constitution, and whereas these individuals have the opportunity to learn values, skills, and leadership that embody military service. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Brad J. Cohen, Mayor of the Township of East Brunswick, along with the Township Council, do hereby express our gratitude to each of you for your willingness to serve our country and protect our freedoms and congratulate you on joining a proud American tradition. We look forward to great things that you will achieve. Our guest speaker today is Michael Bowl from the New Jersey Veterans Network. Michael Bowl graduated from Union High School and subsequently enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. He served in Operation Desert Storm from December of 1990 through June of 1991. After Michael received his associate's degree in criminal justice from Rutgers University, he joined the Township of Union Police Department. During his time at the police department, he was assigned to the street crimes unit, staff services, and other various specialized units. Michael focused most of his time partnering with the numerous community and charitable groups. This made it possible for the creation of events that were able to raise huge sums of support for multiple organizations. During his time as a police officer, Michael saw the need to help veterans. And in March of 2017, he founded the New Jersey Veterans Network, a 501c3 charity that aggressively seeks out veterans in need and provides them with the resources and solutions to live a better way of life. The New Jersey Veterans Network has been able to provide assistance for thousands of veterans in need and is responsible for saving dozens of lives. 
Also, at the same time, Michael became the team captain for Operation Rebound Racing Team, which benefits disabled veterans and first responders by empowering them to compete in various competitive sports. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Bowl helped organize a statewide food and PPE drop-off program to disabled veterans and National Guardsmen. Michael is an avid long-distance runner and triathlete. Currently, he writes for the Blue Magazine and Rena newspapers and has received numerous awards. Please join us with a warm East Brunswick welcome for Michael Bowl. Good afternoon. First thing I want to say is what an amazing day. And I'm proud to be an American. This community really steps up and does it right. And I want to thank you on behalf of New Jersey Veterans Network for making me your honorary citizen today. Thank you. Every day we lose 22 veterans. 40% of veterans that go to the VA are diagnosed with PTSD. I believe those numbers are substantially higher. We need groups to come together and lose their egos to stop this epidemic. And today, I'm here to ask you to help us with our fight to eliminate veteran suicide and help our veterans who are depressed. It's very simple with a phone call. I ask everyone here tomorrow to call a veteran you know and just check on them. That can really change a life. I'm going to be doing it all day tomorrow, and I'm proud to do it. I also want to thank all the veterans in the audience today for their service, and especially the Vietnam veterans. You inspired me to join the military. So I want to thank you for being there when I was a child and making me want to be a Marine. I am proud to be a Marine because of that. I also want to thank all the parents, all the family members. Sometimes you get forgotten. You're the ones that put us back together when we come home, and that's not easy to do. So I want to thank each every one of the parents and family members who stepped up and helped their sons and daughters come home from a big conflict or any type of environment that they knew that there was trauma involved. So thank you for that as well. Thank you. I do like to talk, but I will uh, keep it down a few. Recently, we have been able to join forces with the VFW, the American Legion, the police and fire organizations, the VA, and the MAVA. We are forming a Uniform Heroes Project. This will be a mentorship program, a peer support, where we copy AA and have people go to people's homes, veterans' homes in needs, first responders' homes in needs, to help them get through their crisis. This is a crisis. Mental health is a huge problem. And I feel that the only way to solve this problem is to have people that love other ones to make sure that they can get them through this crisis. We are embarking on a recreational therapy program throughout the entire state of New Jersey. We need volunteers to help this become successful because we know that people that love veterans can make a difference and save lives. So I want each and every one of you to check out our website or volunteer at other organizations and really make a difference. Thank you for this opportunity, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you for that very, very important message. I think we will now follow that message with God Bless America, performed by our East Brunswick Senior Chorus, to be followed by America the Beautiful, performed by Mockingbird Melody, a group of East Brunswick musicians.
thy spacious skies, the Before we conclude today, I just wanted to make some announcements. First, if those of you who have not had the opportunity to go into the municipal building, we have on our wall our hometown heroes, which are pictures of all of those who are or will be or have served in the armed services. I appreciate it if you get an opportunity to go into the building and see those pictures. We're extraordinarily proud. And if there is anybody who has not had the opportunity and does know somebody in town who is active military or was active military for which we would like to have their picture there, please let the Department of Parks and Recreation know so that we can have them appropriately placed on our wall. Also want to recognize the, that the Youth Council today, the East Brunswick Youth Council, will be giving away treat bags and ice pops at the conclusion of today's ceremony. Well, I've got to give them a thanks for that. Again, just wanted to mention the pavers. Anybody interested in uh, providing names of individuals who we could recognize, we'd love to know about that. But please uh, look at some of those on the way out today. And keep in mind that the field of flags that you see out at the entrance to the municipal complex will be on display through July 4th. Before we leave, I also want to acknowledge, and I'm going to mention a number of people today, so please uh, hold your awards and your applause to the end uh, so that we can give them all their proper recognition. But I would like to thank, uh, first of all and foremost, our guest speaker, Michael Ball. Clergy, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Don't hold back. Uh, our clergy rabbi, Eric Eisenkramer. Our U.S. Naval SEAL cadets and their commander, Ensign Laura Yee. Of course, our scout troops, PAX 109, 132, 223, 501, and our Girl Scouts, all of East Brunswick, Milltown, and South River here today. That's what it's about, the youth. So please give them a round of applause. I'd like to thank our East Brunswick Senior Center Chorus under the direction of Robert Siegel, Gail Miklos, and Danielle McCallie. In the back, let's not forget the East Brunswick High School Brass Choir under the direction of Brian Toth. And East Brunswick student Adrian Cerise for playing taps. I know you won't forget the East Brunswick Youth Council as you're getting your ice pop, but please give them <laughs> your applause along with East Brunswick TV for recording the event today. 
Also like to thank John O'Keefe on the bagpipes. <laughs> Mr. William Koch Jr. for presenting the wreath and for his the service of his son Corporal Stephen Koch. Besides living under the safety provided by our military, we all live under the safety provided by our East Brunswick Emergency Services, including the Department of Public Safety, our police department, our fire districts. Please give them all the well-deserved round of applause. And this program doesn't go off without a hitch without the help of our East Brunswick Veterans Alliance Committee, made up of Ir Irwin Steinlight, Paul Deutsch, Ira Roth, Tommy Cohill, Elizabeth Toth, and Karen Kieses. Please give them a round of applause. We'll now commence with the Veterans Recessional. Please ask that you all stand, and the East Brunswick High School Brass Choir will perform an armed service medley. <laughs> 